Before Christmas is no time to pad your color count. Item 13, the Christmas gift drive for the patients of All Angels Children's Hospital under the personal supervision of Lieutenant Howard Hunter. All right. Gifts for these young unfortunates are being wrapped near the front desk even as we speak. And delivery of same is scheduled at 4.30 p.m. Officers Hill, Rinko, Crispy, Mankowitz, Coffee, Bates, and Detectives Bogburn, LaRue, Washington, Belko, and Goldblum will convene at 4.15 sharp in the parking lot for transport to Children's Hospital. Carpooling is recommended. Appropriate wardrobe for Santa's helpers has been provided free of charge by Kowalski's costume and party supply rentals. <laughs> so, uh, we must keep these good people in mind uh, when we come upon their delivery trucks uh, occasionally parked in life's myriad low loading zones. <laughs> Item last. Lieutenant Cayetano has asked me to remind you of a little holiday celebration here in Roll Call commencing at 6 p.m. So as you move off to your various Christmas Eve celebrations, take the moment for some good fellowship, good groceries, and non-alcoholic holiday cheer. I stress non-alcoholic specific reference to last year's pair of revelers who under the influence were discovered partaking of each other's goodwill semi-naked in the middle cell of the garden level holding facility. That's it. Let's roll. And let's be careful out there. Hey! 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 Merry Christmas. Hey, hey, hey. When them little chipmunks sing and them high voices like that, they sing them Christmas songs. I like that a lot. Come on, don't don't say that. Come on, man. Teddy, Neil. Robbery assault at the Hotel Richmond, 3500 block of East Utica. Why can't Washington Heights take it? Because it is still our present. Big deal. Come One on, man. It's your uh, basic bar humbug. You shot up an all night laundry. Miracle nobody got hurt. How do you see your gas? Christmas to you, Howard. Who's your friend? Ho, oh, ho. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Howard. Mm. I got you a little something for the hospital. Oh. Thank you, Henry. That's cute. Howard. Is this really the kind of toy we want to be giving to these children? Henry, unlike some knee-jerk liberal chicken littles who believe that toy guns are harmful to a child's psyche, I am convinced that they provide harmless ventilation for juvenile aggression. You know, this is really a very nice knockoff, Valentine. <laughs> Judas H. Christmas. Our robbery in progress. See surplus store corner people 
Lawrence Drive, on 24th Street. Please, let me get this poor woman out of here. All right, take this thing down. Make some kind of report, and I'll deal with the stoops out of here. Be real careful going down the stairs, and get this thing out of here. If you want a motorcycle escort or something, go ahead and ask for it. You don't need one. Who we got here, Rinko? Well, the first victim was Ablin off to mercy with a gunshot and about a dozen knife wounds. We got a second victim right over there with several witnesses describe the perpetrators as either four male Latinos or three male blacks. Take your pick. Three in the premises in a light blue or possibly yellow late model Ford or Pontiac. Take your pick. Said perps coming in a sort of the heights, waist, distinguishing characteristics, etc., etc., etc. Get them over to the station and run them to the mother. How clever. Why did I not think of that? Hey, you got a problem with me, Renko? Do I? Yes. Matter of fact, I do. Anybody who had brings an attitude like you got to me the day before Christmas is hey, going to have a look, problem. You want to know who you are? I don't want to know who you are. 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 I don't want Merry Christmas! Oh, oh, oh! Merry Christmas, lady! Yeah. Merry Christmas! What? You ain't no Santa. The hell I'm not. You're too ugly to be a Santa. Come on, kid, take a powder. Don't take it on it, Slim. Hey, how would you like a nice crushed vertebrae for Christmas, kid? You know what I think? What? I think you're a cop. Hey, hey. I'm what, right, ain't I? Just keep it down, will you? What's the scam here, Jack? Look, kid, here's a couple of bucks. What do you say? You want to go to a movie or something? Get lost? Come on, beat it. Check you later, Mr. Policeman. <laughs> I am drunk. I am disorderly. And I am prepared to be arrested. Sir, you're not drunk enough and you're not disorderly enough to be arrested. Now, have a candy cane and get on out of here. You ain't hearing me, white boy. I said I want to be arrested and serve time at the Michigan Avenue complex. Come on. Uh, Leo, what seems to be the trouble, huh? 
This guy wants to be arrested so he can have Christmas dinner at the Michigan Avenue complex. Sir, why don't you just mosey over to Jefferson Avenue Men's Shelter? They serve up a mighty fine Christmas dinner. <laughs> See? Y'all know nothing. They serve ham over there. Cannot eat ham. It disconveniences my stomach. They serve turkey at the Michigan Avenue complex. Well, you're gonna have to commit a substantial misdemeanor before we can incarcerate you. You want some statue? I got you some statue. Hey, mama, check this out. I'm Buck Nicky! <laughs> Can't somebody arrest this pervert? Insufficient evidence, Mr. Frill. Okay, Buck, you win your turkey cup. <laughs> Two of the people from the mark were taken over to St. John's, beaten unconscious with baseball bats. One of them a 65-year-old lady. Same four guys. You know, nothing ever changes around here, Frank. What? Well, I was just accosted by a naked pervert. What kind of person does that the day before Christmas? Hey, I have a ton of work to finish before I leave here tonight. Have you packed Frank Jr.'s suitcase yet? Well, um, Frank, I'm having second thoughts. We're leaving on a seven o'clock flight, Faye. It's too late for second thoughts. Well, but what if he gets hurt? He's not going to get hurt. It's three days on the bunny slope, not the Swiss Alps. Besides which, it was your idea for us to take him with us so you could go to Bermuda with Judge what's his name? Frank. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Ferrello. Frank. Faith and Coffee brought in two more robbery assault victims. Same M.O. as the Welfare Hotel. God's sake, that's the third one this morning. And we just got word on another one in the Heights. Let's coordinate with Jack Armetta up there. No sense in duplicating efforts. Do we have these people going through the mug books? Sure, sure. And I've got Rich Velasquez working on composites. So keep me posted. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Fulina. Oh, thank you, Ray. Same to you and Rosa. Gracias. Now, Frank, I have all of Frank Jr.'s presents right here, but you have to promise me that you'll get a nice little Christmas tree to put them under. You know, he's had a Christmas He'll tree every tree. year of his... And, and, Frank, whatever you do, please, please don't forget to hang his stocking. It's the first thing he looks for when he gets up on Christmas morning. And, I, and I've already filled it, you know, with little, little presents and... And candy and things, you know. But the five and dime was out of those little caramel swirls that he's used to. And... It's, it's all right. Well, it hurts, Frank. No, it's, it's the first year that I won't be with him, and, and with you gone, too. I hate palm trees at this time of year. I'll call you at your hotel the moment he starts opening presents so you can be in on it every minute of the time. Okay? <laughs> Remember our first Christmas together? I mean, as a family? We were in the Linwood Avenue apartment. Frank Jr. was about four months old. Oh. <laughs> Half the night trying to put that tricycle of his together. I sat on it for one second and broke it and bought 48 pieces. I think that was our best Christmas ever. Listen, Frank, um, when you get back, do you think we could have Christmas dinner together? I mean, the three of us. I know it'll be a couple days late, but uh, kind of be like old times. Yes, I'd like that a lot. Oh, Bobby, there's a gentleman over by the front desk to see you.
To the town. What brings me to town? <laughs> what kind of question is that? I'm here to spend Christmas with my one and only son. What else? And damn, you look good, boy. You look like aces. As a matter of fact, you look better than aces. You look downright flush. What else brings you to town? <laughs> Listen at you, boy. Sounding like one of these police interrogators. Of course, now that you mentioned it, I do have a, a little end of the fiscal year business to conduct with some local associates, but primarily we are talking about a family visit here, son. Merry Christmas to you, boy. Go on. <laughs> They want to write me a check for five hundred dollars. I be because it's Christmas, <laughs> and I have always said a man can never be too long on a little pocket change come the holidays. Of course, only three hundred and fifty. That's for you. The other hundred and a half being sorely needed by your old man. That is, if you got the spare cash on hand. On account of that being an out-of-state check and all, I figured you'd have a lot easier time running it through your neighborhood bank than I would with mine. But damn. Boy, if you ain't getting handsomer and handsomer every year, and they got nerve enough to tell me that you always did favor your mama in that regard. <laughs> Look, I gotta go. But now, come punch out time. I want you to call me at the Kenmore Hotel and let your old man treat you to some Christmas dinner. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I now, Bobby, Bobby, don't give me no if, ands, buts, or whatsoever you call me, boy. Call me. And Bobby. Don't go spending all of that in one place. <laughs> <laughs> He's not family, he's nothing. I don't understand this mentality. Just how old were you when he left? About six, I guess. Four kids, a wife. They never so much as sent us a postcard to six months later. Every year's the same damn thing. Whenever he needs a little traveling money or whenever the cards or the horses bring him back to town. I never had the nerve to tell him what I thought of him. Damn, why don't you hey just man, leave don't me do alone? That's a gift. That's five hundred dollars. Bogus, Rico. The man never wrote a good check in twenty years. So let's just eat. Kick myself to the day I die for not making things right with my daddy before he passed on. Well, I don't have anything to work out, Rinko, so let's just drop it, all right? Take my advice, Bobby Hill. You get straight with that man. You got to get straight. He's the only daddy you got. <laughs> look, look. We get down to Winooski's poultry and we buy a nice fresh turkey, okay? You can't go wrong with a fresh bird, Neil. It's a real gesture. Mm. You remember that stew I used to date that got pregnant on me? Roxanne, huh? You remember her? Was she steamed up with me, huh? Okay, so it's Thanksgiving, right? I show up at her apartment with a fresh turkey. Another guy's there. She kicks his butt out. We cook the bird. What a night. Damn it, J.D. I didn't make this woman pregnant. 
I killed her husband. It was an accident, man. Give yourself a break. You know, you're beating yourself up over something. I'll bet she doesn't even hold you responsible for it. Yeah, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Come on. Huh? Come on. We'll go down, we'll pick up a bird, and we'll get down there. The gift of food breaks down a lot of emotional barriers. Ah, uh, cream sewage on rye. Good choice, Belker. Oh. Hey, what's the latest on those crazies, Henry? Uh, three assaults on the hill, two in Jefferson Heights. Guys are going for some kind of record. Howard? Uh, Drugs, no doubt. Speed, animal. Tranquilizer's juice. Dog, come, menu. So, tell me, Henry, what do Jews do at Christmas, anyway? I don't know, Howard. Go to Miami? Thank you. I've been invited to dinner uh, at the Wolfowitz's home. Uh, I was wondering if there's some sort of a... Uh, a ritual gift, a sweet wine, or perhaps a, a fruitcake? Or... I'm, I'm trying to convince them that I'm the appropriate suitor for their daughter's hand. How are you intending to take a Jewess for my wife? Right. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Nothing at all. Do the parents know you're of the Christian faith? Well, I intend to fly my colors, if that's what you mean. Thank you. My good woman, do you have the temerity to call this paste gravy? You brought nuts. Slime. Typical female's inability to accept corrective input, Henry. It's the day before Christmas. My husband has deserted me for a 19-year-old tootsie. My kids never call me. Uh, I'm having hot flashes, and I made that gravy. Huh. Uh. Oh. Well, I'm... Uh... Might have been premature in my judgment, madam. It's first rate. I can't take my compliments it to the chef. I just can't take it. I wish I was dead. Nice going, crud brain. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No Reggie here or here. Um, how about Reggie Hilbert? No. Nah. Hilbert Reginald. Mm. Regis Regin. Huh? Regis Hillstone. Hillstone. You looking for that bum, too? Yeah. Well, well sort of. Well, if you find him, I want a piece of him. Guy walked out of his bill not more than an hour ago. Even beat me out of the floor tiles. What do you got on him? Bunko? Yeah, Bunko, I bet. Uh, look, look, Mr. Um, Harv. Harv, this is probably our fault. You see, he probably thought uh, we were hot on his tail, and so he he cut out on it. Well, 25 covered, including the towels. The towels. Yeah. Sorry for the inconvenience. Merry Christmas. Hey, have a good one yourself. <laughs> you like that, Martin? I don't believe you. Damn. I don't believe this. First, he does a number on me. Then he says he'll be at the hotel. Then he leaves me with the damn bill and goes out the back door. You've got to admire the criminal mastermind, Bobby. So are we going to go get him? No! What are you talking about? You're going to let it drop just like this and disappear? Are you going to drop? Three. Last seen headed northbound. 2202 responding. Over. Come on, Rico. Merry Christmas! Oh!
Simmons and Bradovich, Morley, Jim and Yanni, plus all these side park on the perimeter. Frank, I think they changed cars. Now we got a report. They are driving a late model black Oldsmobile, no plate. What's the count? Seven incidents, three shootings. Thank you. The lady in the hard 33rd Street robbery just died. As soon as we get ballistics, distribute citywide and keep an open line of mercy. All right. Are we coming on the photos, Phil? Well, some of the victims are in troubled straits, but they're trying. They send Mueller over to Mercy with some more mug books. Good. Sarge. Yes. You want to take care of this sawed-off little delinquent who is obstructing an ongoing police operation? <laughs> Who are you calling a delinquent? You jarhead, you jarhead in the red suits. Oh, 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 oh. Here's the grandmother's address, Sarge. Oh. Say, Peppy, will you escort young Herman to the B-level in Constitutorium while I see if I can locate the legal guardian? Mm. Lieutenant, I got a photo ID. On a kid that I think is still in county. Now, Joe and I picked this kid up about two weeks ago on a burg. He pulled 60 days, so he's still in county, right? The week before Christmas? They all walk. LaRue, Washington, get going. You too, babe. Where? Uh, the kid's address is in the Heights. Right. Good. Get back up from over there. Hey, Flynn, keep going with the books here. Henry, let's run this Rivera through. Corrections, gang intervention, VCI. How I got it, Ray. Webster, Valentine, Soldier. Police! Get out of here! Go. You've got no business in here, man! Hey, what are you doing in there? Here, it's for you, it's a warrant. All right, where is he? Who? You know who? Hey, I don't know. I don't know. Police, man. Hey! You leave that stuff alone. Better explain. So, you don't know Luis, huh? Who's is this gonna be that, huh? You're under arrest, Rick. I don't need to live here. This, this is my cousin Tina's place. Hey, it looks like a little blow, too, babe. Hey, you're faking me, pigs. You those and pigs! Emma! This is my cousin Tina's place, I told you! Get out of her! This is my You know, the lady died. You say now I killed some old woman? It's called being an accessory, kid. It's called harboring a fugitive, obstruction of justice. You're 18 now, sugar. The gloves come off. You better set my bail, man. You're not getting bail, Carmen. It's Christmas. You gotta give me bail. Hey, hey, Carmelita, you ever been lost in this system? You know, we put you on a bus with the wrong paperwork. Maybe it takes you three, four days just to get to Michigan Avenue. Los nombres, Carmen, los nombres de la persona con quien él está. Well, I know what he does, huh? You know. I don't know. A guy named Miguel from County. Dudes he met inside. More names, Carmen. Más nombres. Miguel Alonso. That's all. Really? 
listen. Come on. Henry, have Maris and William follow her and run the names through corrections. You see, he's my daughter, Cynthia, and she lives in Roanoke. She went to Florida for a few days with her boyfriend for the holidays. So they sent up Herman. Herman! They sent Herman up to me and his papa. And only his papa's working all the time. And in the meantime, he's just going from bad to worse. Ma'am, I can appreciate the difficulty, but... But nothing. Either he goes to the belt room and gets a whipping, or I don't take him home. Ooh. The belt room? Yes, and I took my eldest bear when he was cutting up, and he's a motorman now. And I brought Charles here. Well, he got a whipping every other week, but he's a minister. And that was 22 years ago. Well, you see, the belt room is occupied at the moment. We have a particular incorrigible who's being administered uh, 70 strokes. I figure, young fella, your age, 40, 45, should suffice. You know, you better hope you get a pillow for Christmas, young fella. What's trouble here, Sergeant? Well, I'm uh, going to take this young incorrigible down to the belt room and see if I could affect a little change in attitude. Oh, uh, well, wait, wait a minute. Uh, you had the last one, didn't you? That's right, I did, sir. Well, I think I'll have a crack at this one. Yes. Jimmy, can I help you? Sit down. You gonna whip me? Nah, we don't do that here. Well, I know what goes on in these places. Uh, what I actually wanted to talk to you about was uh, how, how long you think you're gonna be here. What do you wanna know that for? Till a few days after Christmas, you think? Something like that. You in school? Yeah, I go. I heard your grandma out there. Uh, I have a sneaking suspicion maybe you're mad at some people. Some people you think maybe don't love you. Like who? Your mother, maybe? Why she have to go to Florida with that dude? Maybe she's tired. Needs a vacation, I don't know. I have a little boy, too. He's not going to be spending Christmas with his mother, either. Why, she hate him? No, she doesn't hate him. She loves him. It's just that sometimes when a mother and father aren't living together, it, it's hard for them to uh, explain things right to their kids, you know? Like uh, to say they love you when they're not with you all the time. That's all I wanted to tell you. Come on. No, really, that's all. That other dude, he's gonna whip me? I told you we don't do that here. You wanna shake hands instead? If I do, do I gotta be good? No. You just have to remember how many people love you. Hey, Christmas. What are you doing here? Mrs. Maldonado, I, I know it's not anything, but it's the holidays, and I thought I bought you a gift. 
this how you pay off your guilt, huh? Miss Graziata, you killed my husband. I know I did, ma'am. But it was an accident. That's what you say. Police investigation. Big deal. You all stick together. Ma'am, if I could bring him back, I'd do anything. Listen, why don't you do yourself a big favor and just get out of here, huh? Because if you're asking me to forgive you, forget about it, because I'll never forgive you. I wish it were that simple. I wish you could say something, then maybe I could sleep at night. Truth is, I know I did the right thing. But that doesn't change the fact that your husband's dead. And I killed him. I don't know what I'm doing here. I guess I just wanted to make some sort of contact with you to tell you I feel for your loss. Do you know what I'm doing tonight? I'm going to stay open until midnight because people buy a lot of booze on Christmas Eve. And then I'm going home alone and drink and cry on the couch until I pass out because it's Christmas and I don't have my husband. I'm sorry, ma'am. You are so sorry, huh? I'll give you something to be sorry about. Because I am going to sue you and your entire department's butt off for $3.2 million. Telling you, Neil, it's... Okay, men, let's be careful with these costumes. I've got to return them to Kowalski's just the way they gave them to me. Let's go, let's go. We're getting a little late here. Neil, I'm telling you, it's stupid. You took a shot, so what? Hey, just leave me alone, John. Look, you want me to go get the turkey back? It wasn't a turkey, it was a damn goose. All right, whatever, man. I'll march right in and grab the sucker. To hell with it. You know, I'm gonna tell you something. What you got here, what you got is your classic holiday depression syndrome. It's strictly seasonal. You could populate Toledo with a number of dudes that have blown themselves away over eggnog and mistletoe. Yeah, that's just what I need right now. Some third-rate psychological commentary on the holiday blues. Man, you don't have clue one to what's eating me, so why don't you just do me a favor and button it up for a couple of weeks? Hey, 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 now you just hold on a second, pal. Come on, guys. Hey, go suck on a reef coffee. Now, I've been eating a lot of negative flack off you all day, and it's starting to wear kind of thick. Well, you know where the exit is. Damn it, Harley, will you turn that off for a minute, yeah, man? It's my fault the store owner got blown away. Huh? It's my fault his old lady told you to stuff the goose or turkey or whatever the hell it is. Man, you better check the scoreboard before you start getting too righteous with me. Because I have covered your sorry but through more times than I can count. Through times when you weren't even fit for a bench in a detox ward. And now the one time that I need a little understanding, you can't even... Damn it, man! I have seen a ton of damn things! Come on! Hey, what are you doing? Oh, 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 hey, hey, hey! Tomorrow, tomorrow, I think you want twice as big. Mind if I join you? How long has it been since the shooting? <laughs> Three months this Friday. You talked to anybody about it? Frillo, Department of Psych, Jill, LaRue, anybody? I didn't think there was any need to, Henry. I mean, I thought with a little time I could get a handle on it, you know? Have you? It's 
Climb back up on me, Henry. Choking on it. This job's full of guys like you, Neil. Want the world to think they got it all under control. Everything's cool. No problem, no sweat. Strong and silent. Ain't that just part of the profile, huh? Like hell it is. You know what happens to guys like that, Neil? Guys like you want to keep it all inside themselves? Sometimes it takes a while, years maybe. But sooner or later, they lose everything that ever meant anything to them. Their friends, families, the job. Maybe they just end up alone in the middle of the night staring down the barrel of their service 38. I, I, I want to talk it out, Henry. I want to deal with it. But I guess we just don't know how, man. All right. There is a counselor named Brennan out of Midtown. He's helped a lot of guys through this sort of thing. Go see him, Lee. You got a lot of friends in this department, Neil. Try to lean on us now and then, will you? St. Valentine's Day Massacre, Tom Kipper War, Christmas Eve, Rampage on the Hill. What's it all about, Bobby? Holiday motif. Hill, thank you. Your reindeer suits are waiting. <laughs> well, I checked out at the hotel. Wanted to see when you was getting off. You didn't check out. You beat him for 25 bucks. I paid it. Oh, <laughs> Come on, Bobby. I'll just sit up and check in the mail. I do it all the time, boy. Now, come on, Bobby. Have dinner with me tonight. Forget about it. There's nothing here, Reggie. Now, wait a minute, boy. Don't you dare call me Reggie. Good, bad, or indifferent, I'm still your father. And don't you ever forget it. Oh, no, you're not. You never were. I'm sick and tired of you blowing into my life, tearing up a bunch of old wounds, and then getting back on the bus, leaving all over again. I just want you to leave me alone. All right. Buddy, I'll be going. Listen, Listen Bobby, I... I could use a little, a little getting away cash, if, if you can spare it. Bobby, I want you to understand something, son. I didn't come here just to hurt you, boy. And I didn't come here just for the money. Bobby, you gotta understand, son. I'm just a... I'm just a traveling man. Do it. Travel! Right now! Bobby, I...
Christmas, children. Merry Christmas! It was the... Uh, uh, <laughs> it was the night before Christmas, and all through the hospital, not a creature was stirring, not even a marsupial. The tree was all trimmed, and outside it was snowing, but the children were troubled because Santa's not showing. Uh, but wait, here's his wife and two of his fairies. I'll ask them where Santa is, and why is he telling? I don't know. He left the North Pole over two days ago. His sled was all gassed and in tip-top condition. I gave it a lube and rewired the ignition. Hey, I'm his personal elf. I'm worried sick. He's never this late. It's not like St. Nick. But hark! What's that racket? Could it be? No, it can't. Sounds like a sled. Then it's got to be. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Iceland and cars I blew. But here I am now with presents for you. myself, I got another benefit I gotta do in just a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, what's her name, JC? Loretta, Sicilian babe. She is going to go hot desire of you. <laughs> Hell, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Hey, Bobby. What do you got going tonight? Well, a bunch of us guys are going over to the QBX. Chiquilic's gonna throw a Christmas bash. She has to get these antlers kind of worn down. <laughs> How are you gonna come back? <laughs> no, I can't. I got a date. Hey, we all have dates. Bring them along. Yeah. Well, thanks anyway, but I got a big dinner lined up and then a party with relatives. You know, it's holiday stuff. All units in the vicinity north of Elmwood. Pursuit in progress of late model black holes mobile four door. Hey, listen up. Require two elevens. Suspects presumed armed and dangerous. Repeat. All units Sounds in the like vicinity north and up ahead, Neil.
procedures here, shall we, gentlemen? Ray, I want all the victims sequestered until we can arrange a lineup, and I want that done as soon as possible, Henry. I'm not about to blow this ID on some logistical screw-up. Yes, sir. Ray, call the PD's office and get their representation down here. J.D., Neil, to jump on the paperwork. You promise me. You promised me that they're going to pay for what they did. You promised me. We're doing everything we can, Mrs. Grady. Word on Lucy. Coffee roll with her in the ambulance to Mercy. She's in intensive care. Keep me posted. Thanks. Afternoon. Get a bit. I don't want a man. I can be a real meathead sometimes. But your friendship, uh, it means more to me than anything. Yeah. This is for you. What's this, man? It's a Christmas present, you melon. What's it look like? Uh, how about we exchange them tonight? After dinner. This, uh, some kind of half-assed dinner invitation? I'll call Jill and ask her to set a couple of extra plates, okay? You're on. Hey, I'll bring the goose. <laughs> Don. Don! I won't know that till we have a lineup. Yeah. Yes, of course. Right. Mm -hmm. You're a lifesaver, Conflict. Hot wax and flat file. You're going to be the fastest Italian on snow since Gustavo Turney. Who's that? Forget it. You all set? Now, just a couple of details, and I'll be right with you. Frank, we've got to go all the way across town to pick up Frank Jr. And believe me, if we miss this flight, we'll be stranded at that airport till Easter. Excuse me, Francis. Well, Miss Davenport, don't we look ravishingly alpine? Thank mm. you, Phil. Oh, well, Lucy Bates is out of intensive care. It was only a mild concussion. They're gonna keep her overnight for observation. Oh, that's great, Phil. Listen, let's send her some flowers from everyone. I'll pay for them. All right. Phil, send the bill to me. Yes, Miss Davenport? Now, what about this unfinished business? We're gonna line up for the first two victims, Frank. Uh... So far, we're batting a clean 1,000. Good work, Henry. We're out of here, Counselor. Uh, Frank. Chief Daniels on line five. I think it sounds urgent. Uh, tell him I'm going skiing, right? My kind of man. Merry Christmas.
You have never seen the like of me before. Well, I'm not sure I see the like of you now. <laughs> oh, but, but I hear you. I, I hear you. <laughs> so I've heard. <laughs> You're the one who's too tight with a penny to buy himself a pair of spectacles. Sorry, I think you have the wrong number. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, too. Goodbye. Joseph. Hey, I know it's a little crooked, not to mention being a dwarf, but it was practically the last one left in town. I grabbed that at Mangiatis two minutes before they closed. It's really beautiful. 